Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Imagine a situation where seemingly healthy looking individual while doing some or the other routine activity suddenly has severe headache. The headache is so severe that he or she has never experienced it in the past. This may be followed by multiple episodes of vomiting and the patient may even become unconscious. With all this panic around, the patient is rushed to the casualty of the hospital. Imagine this can happen to any of us at any time. Sounds scary, right? Yes. This is what happens in subarachnoid hemorrhage or SAH. In simple words, it means bleeding inside the skull in few areas around the brain called as subarachnoid space. The most common cause of spontaneous SH. I say spontaneous because I'm not considering head injury as a cause of SH. So the most common cause of spontaneous SH is rupture of an outpouching called as aneurysm in the blood vessels supplying blood to the brain. To know more about this dangerous as well as interesting condition, do make sure you watch this video till the end. Now that I mentioned the word aneurysm, you may be wondering what is an aneurysm and why does it happen? Blood flows to the brain inside a vessel called as artery. To supply different areas of the brain, there, is, there are multiple branches arising from the artery. Going by the basic physics principles, whenever there is branching, there is going to be turbulence of flow inside. So few areas of the vessel wall get higher impact of the blood flow compared to the other. So in case if the blood vessel wall is weaker for whatever reason, those areas getting higher impact of the blood flow will start to have an outpouching. And this slowly grows over time to form a bigger balloon like structure called as an aneurysm. I mentioned if the vessel wall is weak, why does this happen? This can happen because of some age related changes, cholesterol deposition, high blood pressure, high blood sugar and sometimes because of some congenital problems making the blood vessel wall inherently weaker. Once the aneurysm is formed, it most of the time remains asymptomatic. That is, right now a lot of people have aneurysm inside their brain and they don't even know about it. Very rarely, aneurysm can become symptomatic even before rupture, that is if it compresses the nearby structures and causes some symptoms related to it. Like it happens most commonly in case if the patient develops drooping of one of the eyelids because of compression of a nerve called as oculomotor nerve by the aneurysm arising from an artery origin called as PCOM or the posterior communicating artery or sometimes patients can have decreased vision in one of the eye because of compression of the optic nerve by the aneurysm arising from the internal carotid artery. Well, if you consider one way, this could actually be a blessing in disguise. That is, they get to know about the presence of the aneurysm even before it ruptures. Well, if these things don't happen, then some or the other day aneurysm announces its presence by a massive rupture causing subarachnoid hemorrhage making it literally a walking bomb. So the most common way how an aneurysm presents is by rupture causing bleeding around some areas of the brain called as SAH or sometimes within the brain parenchyma called as ICH or inside the ventricles called as IVH. The amount of bleeding that happens because of rupture is highly variable and the patients can be presented to the casualty merely with severe headache or sometimes they can even be brought to casualty in deep coma or may even be brought dead. Needless to say that their recovery mainly depends on the way they have presented that is the amount of bleeding that has already happened. So when an aneurysm ruptures, this bleeding stops after some time because of multiple reasons, mainly because of the inherent defensive mechanisms in the brain. 
there will be a formation of blood clot there will be constriction or narrowing of the blood vessels around that the rupture point gets sealed with the blood clot the brain parenchyma etc but if you imagine the whole thing has now become more fragile than how it was before the rupture right so that means that this is now at even higher risk of rupture again that is re rupture causing re bleed so in case of aneurysmal rupture causing sh the biggest threat is re rupture causing re bleed and almost all the time the second bleed is much much severe than the first bleed and it can be life threatening as well so when the patient presents to us with an aneurysmal rupture the main aim of treatment is to prevent its re rupture by securing the aneurysm because what has happened has already happened and we cannot reverse it however there is a second reason as well why we need to treat the aneurysm i'll come to that a little later so how do we prevent the re rupture of the aneurysm to prevent re rupture of the aneurysm or to secure the aneurysm there are primarily two ways of treatment one is called as surgical clipping second is endovascular coiling however there are a few other methods as well or they can be called as modifications of these like a vascular bypass or placement of a flow diverter etc but mainly there are two ways surgical and endovascular by surgical i mean opening the skull cap reaching the site of aneurysm and securing it and by endovascular i mean puncturing the femoral artery passing a catheter inside the blood vessel till the site of rupture and then securing it in this we open the skull cap reach till the site of rupture and place what is called as a clip which appears like this around the neck of the aneurysm hence separating the aneurysm from the rest of the circulation even though it looks as simple as this on paper it, in reality it involves a lot of challenges if somebody were to ask me among hundreds and thousands of neurosurgical procedures which are the top 5 most complex operations i would say aneurysm clipping is one of them so when i say it is a very complex operation obviously it involves a lot of risks as well but talking about the risks of surgical clipping will drag this video too long so i'll make a separate video about the surgical clipping associated complications but the bottom line is that if we fear those complications and do not treat the aneurysm these problems are going to happen anyway with the re rupture in this we puncture the femoral artery pass a catheter inside the blood vessel reach till the site of the aneurysm and fill the aneurysm with coils from inside hence securing it now sometimes depending on the size and shape of the aneurysm a stent may have to be placed to prevent the slippage of coil back to the normal vessel or sometimes a different device called as flow diverter may have to be placed again discussing in detail about the procedure as well as complication is going to make this video too long so i'll have a separate video about the endovascular treatment of aneurysms uh, previously i did mention that there is another reason why this aneurysm needs to be addressed apart from its re rupture risk let's come to that whenever sh happens now the blood is outside the blood vessel in the subarachnoid space which is not its normal space normally it is supposed to be inside the blood vessel so when the blood is in this abnormal space it is going to irritate the tissues around that so when it irritates the blood vessel blood vessel responds by constricting or becoming narrow this in medical terms is called as vasospasm this is one of a very frequent complication encountered after subarachnoid hemorrhage and this happens because of the bleeding which has already happened even before the patient presented to us what is the problem with vasospasm imagine a situation you need to fill a bucket with the hose pipe of say diameter 10 mm and you need say for about 2 uh, minutes to fill the bucket now imagine filling the same bucket with a narrower diameter Uh, pipe obviously it's going to take more time right so 
in other words in 2 minutes maybe only half the bucket would be filled so this is what happens when the blood vessels constrict the brain doesn't get adequate blood supply so because of this suboptimal blood supply brain will have multiple areas of what's called as infarct in other words the patient is going to have stroke let's come back to the same example if you were to fill the bucket with a narrower pipe as discussed previously how could you do it in the same amount of time maybe you can do it if you attach some motor or something which you know uh, pushes the water at a greater speed right so use the same concept in case of brain if we have to pass the blood through a narrower diameter vessel maybe we'll be able to achieve it to some extent if we keep the blood pressure high so that the blood flows at a greater force so in case if the patient develops vasospasm obviously there are going to be multiple medicines to tackle this but in addition to those medicines we also have to keep the blood pressure high and keep the blood volume high by giving a lot of fluids to the patient but if the aneurysm is still present and if we increase the blood pressure definitely it's going to rupture again as the blood is going to hit that aneurysm at a greater force right so in case if the patient develops vasospasm to treat that the aneurysm should be already secured this is the other reason i mentioned previously of course there are many other complications associated with sh as well but let's not discuss all of them in this video and make this too long so to discuss a few other aspects of aneurysm and sh i will be making a separate video meanwhile if you found this video informative make sure you give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and for more such informative videos subscribe to this channel thank you for watching